Hey guys, and welcome to another review. I'm sorry in advance about the strange format, but I just wanted to get this video out there. Today we are going to be talking about the M4 Pro Win Hop-Up and the experience that I have had with it. So I did purchase the hop-up unit with my own money, and the reason why I did purchase it was because I broke the C-clip on the Crytac hop-up unit, and it was £15 for replacement, and I just thought, why not just spend a little bit extra and get a whole new hop-up unit? So I'm sure a lot of you guys will know why I chose this specific hop-up unit. There is a lot of hype behind it, and you'll see the likes of Umbrella Armory putting it in a lot of the rifles. In terms of the installation, it is super easy to install, just like any other M4 hop-up unit. So I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of it, but it just installs like everything else. When it comes to the hop-up unit itself, it is rotary style, and it doesn't click through the adjustments. You're allowed to make fine adjustments, and it just rotates freely, which is a nice feature. And then, of course, there's the obvious, it looks cool. So here's the scenario, I have everything installed in my gun, I'm ready to go, take it out, go to shoot some BBs and nothing is coming out of the barrel. I then take the hop-up unit out of the gun again, have a look at it and find out that the BBs, as I'm dropping them into the hop chamber, aren't making it past the feed lips of the bucking. So I tried it with a few different buckings and it was just exactly the same. I could not for the life of me figure out why this was happening and why the BBs just weren't making it through the bucking lips. So I did have to do quite a lot of research online and it was quite difficult to find out a little bit about this. But essentially, the hop-up chamber itself is more of an O-shaped. So I'll put it on screen here. Um, it's a little bit more O-shaped as opposed to an oval shape, which basically prevents the BB from getting through the bucking lips because it's just squeezed too tight. Now there were two options I was presented with to get past this. One was to take a Dremel and file down the feed lips of the bucking and the second was to actually take a Dremel to the hop unit itself and kind of Dremel away parts of it to make it into that kind of oval shape. So I'm sure a lot of you will understand when I say that I wasn't about to take a Dremel to the hop up unit itself. So the obvious choice for me was to file down the feed lips of the bucking. So I started taking a Dremel to the bucking itself. So if a lot of you aren't aware, there is a kind of BB drop test. So the idea is basically that you should be able to drop the BB onto your bucking and with very, very little force, you should be able to push the BB past the bucking lips. After a lot of back and forth, I was able to get the bucking to the point where I could actually drop the BB through it without any resistance from the bucking lips. So I'd file them down to basically within an inch of their life. Once I had all this done, the next step was to put everything back together, put it back in the gun and test it. And the results were horrific. So I basically went from a Crytac SPR Mark II shooting at 1 to 1.1 joules, all the way down to 0.5 joules. As for the reason behind it, I just don't know. So I don't have the science or the technical know-how to find out why it was doing this in the first place. The rifle would sometimes shoot at 0.9 joules, but then immediately drop back down to 0.5. So you're getting one or two shots at a high velocity, and then dropping right back down. It just wasn't working. I know a lot of people love the Pro Win hop-up, and I've got nothing against it. Maybe I just had a lemon, but for me, this just didn't work out, especially with the Crytac. So this is the reason why I didn't want to modify the hop-up unit itself. I figured I would just modify the bucking lips, and if anything continually went wrong after that, I would just be able to return the hop unit itself to the retailer, which is what I actually did in this case. In the end, I didn't even buy a replacement C-clip for my Crytac hop unit. I literally just got some PTFE tape or Teflon tape for the Americans there, and just wrapped it around the broken C-clip to hold it in place, and it's working perfectly now. So the real question here is, are you going to have the same experience? I just don't know. I see a lot of guys running these hop-up units in G&Gs. So maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe it just doesn't agree with the Crytac. But for me, it just did not work out at all. My advice would be, if you have a Crytac, just leave the hop unit stock. It's a really good hop unit. It's rotary style as well. So there's no reason for you to change it. So just keep it as it is. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say a massive thank you. Obviously, you can find out a lot more about what I'm doing daily with Airsoft on my social media, specifically Instagram, so go there and check it out if you want some more cool content. As always, thank you to my sponsor, UK Fob. Head over to ukfob.co.uk and use discount code RS5 for 5% off anything in store. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. It would really help me out. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe and stay home.